Hi everybody, my name is Michael and welcome to the Metroidvania Forge series, Chapter 2. In this chapter, we're going to be covering the World Building Foundations. And if you've followed along, Chapter 1 was about our player foundations. And so we built a nice playable character that has all the basic moves that we need to start a Metroidvania style platformer. So with Chapter 2, the main goal is that we're going to begin designing an interconnected world because that's kind of the heart of a Metroidvania series, right? The world is a character almost as much as the character is, maybe even more so in some cases. And so what we want is a world that encourages exploration, that's exciting, that maybe has some mystery to it. And in order to do that, we're going to be discussing design principles, how to work on building your world and that atmosphere, as well as the technical things that we need to be able to start building and creating those levels like tile maps, tile sets, level transition systems, etc. And so this is what the chapter layout is going to look like. Chapter one is going to be our world inspiration. Here we're going to be creating a mood board, we're going to talk about concept art, we're going to be talking about designing and making a basic map that you can use as a guide while you're working on your game. And I'll share some tools that I use as well as some other skills. We won't go too depth into how to create concept art per se, although, you know, if, if there's a desire for that, then please go ahead and drop that in the comments. I'd love to share some of my art making process that I go through. But then once we're done with that, we'll use that inspiration in chapter two to begin creating our first tile set assets. The tile maps that we'll create, we'll create in a sprite and you'll be able to use other software if you want to, because the general concepts still apply. But we will be in that video in episode two, we will be in a sprite creating sprite sheets, talking about the methodologies that I use. We'll talk about two different kinds of sprite sheets, you know, just creating general tiles and shapes and platforms that you can use as well as auto tile creation. And I'll share some templates. In addition, I will provide a basic asset pack that has all of the things that you would want to be able to start creating levels. And so if you're struggling with the art and you're not sure if you can get it going, I do encourage you to follow this along, but then you can still grab that asset pack, which is available on my HIO page, download that and have stuff to get ready and get running on the ground floor when we get to episode three. Episode three, we're gonna create our first tile set. A tile set is a way to take that tile map and make it usable in Godot. We'll add collision layers, we'll make it so that we can auto tile, and then we'll use that tile map to create a basic level. Chapter four is gonna cover our level and the level bounds that bind and constrain our camera to what's viewable. And we'll create a nice, easy to reuse system that we can drop into each level so that it's worry-free and you'll be able to preview what's happening while you're in the editor. Then next, we'll create level transitions so that you can move from one level screen to another. And this will be another nice, easy to reuse component. And part of the homework will be for you to start creating extra levels. So now we'll be able to connect them, make it so that the player transitions between them. And we'll even include a nice little transition effect that you can build onto and expand on top of if you wanna you know, embellish that a little bit. The next step will be to begin adding parallax layers for extra depth and dimension and to bring our levels to life. And so we'll be looking at examples like Silksong that use parallaxing to a high degree to get that sense of depth, even though we're a 2D game. And we'll talk about how we can implement those same kinds of effects in Godot. And we'll use our tile maps to create layers that go into the background. We'll also cover in chapter seven, how to make props and basic animated decorations. So things like plants and a torch that we can place in our levels to give it even more life. And we'll cover a couple different ways to animate and implement those. Once those are in place, we'll do some overview of world and environment lighting. We'll add directional lights to our scene to give a little bit of atmosphere, as well as lights within the levels to create effects like light streams or torches that light up. And this is going to really give you an idea of how you can work to just make a little bit more interesting looking levels, right? That have more of a vibe. Or maybe you want to create dark dungeons and you need the torches to highlight certain areas. And so this will give you all the tools that you need to be able to do that. Once we've done the lighting, then we're going to work with particles as well as some other visual flourish like a fog that will overlap and be an extra layer in our scenes. And these flourishes and these particles are going to help bring our game to life even more and add an extra element of visual interest to draw your players in to make the world feel more believable. And then lastly, I want to cover some level prototyping features that we're going to implement into our game, but also talk about the concepts of how to go about building your maps. Because obviously we're kind of early in the game and we're getting into a lot of the details in this chapter about how to make a level look beautiful. But in reality, in the long run, you probably want to make most of your levels, if not all of them, functional before you make them beautiful. Otherwise, you're going to be doing a lot of backtracking. And so we'll talk about common pitfalls and approaches that you can use to make sure that you do your work in a smart way moving forward with your project. So there we go. 
Welcome to chapter two. I know some of you have been waiting and I've been anxious to get back to this series as well. I will include in the link of this description, along with all my videos, a link to my itch.io page so that you can get the assets to go along with this. There will be some icons that we'll use in addition to the tile map assets and example assets that I'll provide. I'll also have links to my Discord community so that you can join that server and come find help from other like-minded developers who are working on their games as well. The Michael Games Discord server has grown quite a bit in the last year and a half that I've been doing this channel, and it's really active and full of some amazing people. So if, if that sounds like something you want to be a part of, then please join that. And then lastly, if you want a little bit more access, my Patreon supporters who are in the Pixel Adventurer tier have access to the code repository of the code that I'm developing as I work on and publish this tutorial series. So they'll have access to not only the files that I put in there, but also the code, the scenes, the whole Godot project. So if that's something that you want to do, that's a perk that I give to my Patreon supporters because they've helped me come a long ways with this channel and I greatly appreciate them. So you can find those links and if you're new, subscribe. If you want to see what we did in chapter one, then please hop back, make your player, get ready for this, because I'm going to start publishing videos for chapter two very soon. So with that, thank you for watching, and as always, we'll see you next time.